Hi, I'm Park Howell, and welcome to the Business of Story, where brand storytelling thought leaders come to give you tips and techniques that will help you clarify your story to amplify your impact and simplify your life. Tap into their insights as you define your story using our DIY Brand Story Strategy Workbook. It's a 64-page how-to guide with real-world examples and links to video tutorials that will help you refine your story for 2018 and beyond. Download your workbook today at businessofstory.com. I thought it was just a stupid picture of a pig in the ocean. But after hearing that story, I had to have it. Now I wasn't just buying a picture. I was buying a story. Story literally made the picture worth more money to me. That's what businesses are about. People buy brands. People buy stories much more than anything else. I work with a lot of big enterprise companies, but let's just say I always tell folks, drop the PowerPoint, close your laptops, start with your story. If you want people to get engaged and you want people to act, you have to tell them an emotionally powerful story. That's with great characters, it's with uncertain outcomes, and it's with high stakes and drama. All business strategy is a story. Hi, folks. I hope you're looking forward to Social Media Marketing World in San Diego starting on February 28th. I know I am because I'm kicking off the conference with an all-new Business of Story workshop. You know, we had 800 in attendance last year, and I'm hoping you can make it next month. Save your seat now. I've also been given the honor of hosting a brand storytelling panel on March 1st with two amazing business storytellers. You met one of my panelists, Cassie Roma, on our show last month, episode 123. It's titled, How to Tell Stories on Purpose That Resonate with Your Audiences. She is a hoot, and she talked about how she approaches brand and business storytelling in New Zealand. Well, on today's show, you get to meet and hear from our other panelist, one of Microsoft's chief storytellers, Miri Rodriguez. Miri is an award-winning creative journalist whose work was recognized as a best practice at the annual Microsoft Think Tank Summit for engaging partnerships with internal teams to drive a unified social voice and customer experience. She was selected twice to participate in Microsoft's prestigious program, Hashtag My Skills for Africa, where she volunteered her social expertise to train and coach social enterprise leaders in Swaziland and Morocco to effectively launch their social programs. Miri also volunteers as a business consultant and student coach at Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. She is on the board of directors of membership at Trade Plus Impact, social enterprise organization, And in all of her spare time, Miri is a personal brand coach for professionals of all ages and backgrounds. Now, on today's show, you'll learn the four storytelling pillars that Microsoft uses to humanize its brand. These are approaches to different kinds of stories you can use to make your brand and business storytelling connect with your audiences on a personal level and move them to action. You'll even hear one of their stories in action right here on today's show. So let's get started with Miri Rodriguez. Miri, welcome to Business of Story. Hi, Park. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on your podcast. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate it because I know you had to travel clear across the country. I was on social media yesterday, and I think you were out talking at uh, Social Fresh out in Orlando. Is that right? Yes, yeah. I never turned down Florida as one of my venues because I'm right close to my family and also Mickey, which I'm a huge fan. So, yes, I was at Social Fresh, uh, Fresh and that was my last uh, speaking engagement of this year. And uh, so it was a nice wrap up for me. Oh, good for you. And now you're back in cloudy and rainy Redmond, Washington. It's actually sunny, but it's 28 degrees. So it's cloudy and cold. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. You know, I literally grew up just up the valley from you in Woodenville, Washington, right above St. Michelle Winery. And when I was a kid, that was actually a dairy back in the wow. day. Wow. I have passed by Woodenville and a lot, a lot of you know, people at Microsoft work there. I mean, live there. So I'm excited to go check it out. I still haven't seen everything around here. There's so much to see. I'm so glad that you you know the area. Oh, it is beautiful. And the Sammamish Valley there, when you're driving across it on a sunny day and you see Mount Rainier oh. at the end of it, it looks like it's right at the end of it, but it's, you know, several, you know, it's a hundred miles away or so, but it is just magnificent. It's majestic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. And you, Miri, are 
the storyteller at Microsoft, or are there a number of storytellers at Microsoft? There are many other storytellers at Microsoft. There's actually 4,000 worldwide. I don't ah. know that. And there's 400 here in Redmond. And there's three specific to my team. I'm in the IT side of Microsoft. So in IT Showcase is where I sit. And there's three of us here in IT Showcase. So Mary, how did you get into brand storytelling for a global juggernaut like Microsoft? <laughs> you know, everybody always asks that. Uh, the answer is, I got lucky. I got lucky. And I think uh, the part of that luck is really understanding the 360 of a business uh, that gets you into being able to tell a good story. So I've done a whole lot in my career, in my 20 plus uh, career in, um, in throughout uh, operations, marketing, social media, and really understanding the entire industry itself and the business itself. And I think that allows you to really speak to the story of the business and how you can actually understand what we do as a discipline and how that, that permeates through every aspect of the business. If you can understand that, you can really tell a good story. And if you can tell a good story, then you could probably get hired as a storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's so much more than just understanding that 360. It's actually being able to tell a story. And a lot of people in business in particular think they can tell stories, but they really don't because, you know, they just aren't trained to do it or whatever. How did you get your training in it to become someone now that really professes it and works it through your 4,000 people at Microsoft? Yeah, you know, so the training really is a natural a natural path to the, the truth is, Park, that we are all storytellers. We just don't know it. I, I really believe that, you know, when, when you sit in front of your, uh, you know, co a friend in a coffee shop, you're telling stories. You're a storyteller. That's what we do as humans. That's how we connect. And so we, we kind of, you know, we've made it such a big buzzword and a big deal. And But if we can get it down to the basics of how we can tell stories and speak to our friends and we can use those same skill sets to talk to our customers, that's what they connect with. So if we if we open up our hearts and our minds and say, you know, how can I explain something that could be really deeply technical in a way that my friend can understand as I'm having coffee with them, we do it all the time and we can do it with our customers. And so, you know, skill sets help, obviously, if you, if there, you know, if you take some training on maybe Toastmasters on presentation skills and that kind of thing. But overall, as humans, we are hardwired to tell great stories. And if we can hone those internal skills, uh, just like like I'm doing today with everyone and just talk about ourselves, talk about how, how we are doing things. That's what we're doing at Microsoft. We're really talking about how we're using our own technologies. We're celebrating our engineers and how they're doing what they're doing and who they're doing it with. People tune into that. You know, they're more excited about how we do it and why we do it than just what the product and the outcome is. Now, Mira, you've been in business, the business world for 20 years. Were you always telling stories or communicating in that realm when you first started? Or is it something that has evolved? Because, you know, storytelling mm -hmm. wasn't even a big thing five years ago, but now, like you said, it's kind of all the rage. Yeah, yeah. You know, I my major is communications, so I am naturally a communicator and a connector. So I was always telling stories in different aspects. And internally, I was telling them to get people to um, understand my what I was doing. So for example, if I wanted to do a new experiment, if I wanted to throw out a new pilot for the business, wherever whatever discipline I was in, whether I was in operations or marketing, I had a new idea. I found out that the quickest way to get people to buy into that idea was to tell a story, right? I could present facts and, you know, business wants to see data, uh, why we should do what we're doing, why should we employ resources in a particular area. Um, and that's fine. I had the data and I had the numbers, but I, w I found that by telling a story uh, of a customer who came to me and said something, it was a little bit more compelling. It, 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 all of a sudden, it made that idea human, right? It, it had an, a human aspect. Somebody behind that idea was being personally um, impacted by it. So I, I learned quickly the art of... Uh, maybe persuasion through story because people tune in and they, they, they stay engaged through a story. And so I, you know, I, I evolved that over the years, obviously. Uh, and again, in different areas of, of uh, in disciplines of, of a business. And I was able to really quickly catch on to the fact that if I, no, no matter where I was presenting, who I was talking to, I could tell a story and people lean in. And so, and I wouldn't bore them to that. Right? So uh, I think that's a great, oh, I'm sorry. That was a reminder. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. That's, uh, 
I like the little soundtrack. That's it's nice. my computer telling me things are happening by in the background. Huh? So, um, so yeah, that, that's basically that's basically it. And so I think I think that you know it it did evolve, obviously evolved to what it is today. Um, and and the way that it evolved is as I learned the magic of storytelling and the power of storytelling, I began to hone in more and more into it. I began to read about it. I began to understand better how how you know what are the different types of stories and why people tune into those and what are the conclusions that people take away. One of the things that I learned personally that was not taught to me was that if a great story will let the audience, you know, have their own conclusions, that everybody walks away with something different and new, but they walked away with something. So at first I was, you know, almost, almost um, focused on what should be the conclusion. I need to let them know the moral of the story or the learning that they should walk away with or the key takeaway. And no, you don't, you tell the story and everybody walks away with something new and different and they discuss it. And it's a learning experience for everyone, including the storyteller. That's a great story. Did you ever find it difficult in an IT world like Microsoft to get some of the really brilliant engineers and IT folks on board? Because you know, so often they're so yeah. logic minded driven that they go, oh, storytelling, that's cute. That's a soft skill. Don't bore me with that. I mean, did you have that problem in getting it indoctrinated into Microsoft? Microsoft? I'll tell you honestly, it is still a challenge. I'm not going to lie. And I found that the, what gets them a little bit, you know, to open up. And once they do, by the way, they're amazing, wonderful storytellers themselves. It's almost like like, you know, this treasure that nobody knows about that I've uncovered with these engineers. Once I get them talking about their personal stories, they won't stop. And then they open up in a way that is incredible. I often ask them why they're here why, how they got here and why they're here. A lot of them have migrated to the U.S., so they definitely have a great story to tell, uh, a personal, you know, deep personal story that they can share. And I and I hone into that. I, I dig a little deeper. I ask them what that meant to them. I'm also an immigrant, so I relate to them that way. Um, I ask them, you know, was it hard for you? Was it a culture shock? How do you feel? How was your family, you know, feeling about it? And and that immediately gets to the core of their, of their soul and they begin to open up. And so it gets easier to talk about why they're here and why they, they do what they do um, and, and if they love it and why they love it. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's still a challenge. And I think it's a challenge not only in IT, I think for everyone. Um, you know, we don't just open up regularly to everyone. We don't, we, we're not, we've, we've, we've learned to close off, and especially in a climate like today, in an environment where just uh, so many things are taken out of context and you have fake news. So people are afraid, you know, to open up. And I think the best way is to, is to really get them to, um, to trust you in the process. And once they do, they open up and it's, it's a beautiful thing. Well, Mary, you're so right. I think that, you know, people speak in generalizations yes. because generalizations are safe and people can't attack you because you're not really ever making a point right. or taking a stand on something. And that's what story requires you to do because you've got to tell a true, authentic, you know, authentic honest story, well told. So can I ask you, um, your story, and it always, to me, I found, yes. comes back to a moment in time. Can you think of a moment when you were either a young professional or a young girl? I believe you grew up in Venezuela, right? Did, yes, in Caracas. Uh-huh. So did was, it, was there a moment, can you take us to a moment in your life that pivoted you or had you realize that you would become a professional storyteller to connect people around the world? Yes, absolutely. There's many, but one of the main ones that I attribute storytelling uh, to is actually my mom raised me as a fervent feminist. And uh, it was something that I didn't know, you know, I, 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 it was my truth. It was how I was raised. You know, it was don't, don't have a man open your door because you have two good arms. Don't ever. <laughs> that's exactly that was the teaching in my household. Right. You know, and it was, you know, don't don't accept gifts from anyone by yourself, you know, have enough money to buy yourself your own things. Um, it, when I got married and I got married young at 20, um, I, I immediately saw that there was a disconnect in that, that my husband wanted to serve me. Right. He wanted to open the door for me. And I, yes, I have two good arms, but but marriage and relationships are about serving each other. I am not. I'm not better by being self-sufficient. I need to, and I should need to connect and be dependent on someone else because that's community, that's relationship. And so that realization made me want to go into stories and, and talk about my own experiences and why I believe 
that change of heart came to me. I no longer agreed with the notion of feminism. Um, in fact, I went the other way and it was being completely feminine owning my femininity as a woman and everything that comes with it. Uh, and then that falls into a really nice place that is uh, almost, a div- uh, it is a divine man- mandate for my husband to serve me and for me to serve him in my capacity as a woman. And so I told stories about it, right? And people people listened and, and I, I realized the, inf- the influence that that had and the impact on so many young women. I actually turned into a brand coach because of that, a personal branding coach. Uh, so many young girls are so lost in this world with this, this ideal uh, a feminist, um, you know, movement, which may have began as something really powerful to, you know, to get genders to be equal, but it, it just, it's been twisted so much. And I think it's just gone, you know, the other way. And it's become about men bashing and, and everything else that it's not supposed to be. So that was my pivotal moment in life where I realized stories are impactful. And if I can't change the world 100%, I can change the world one person at a time with my personal story. And so that's how you express your personal brand within Microsoft to help Microsoft capture its stories of the people it helps around the world, Um, not talking about the products and services, but talking about the impact that Microsoft actually has in, in people's lives. Absolutely. And because Microsoft gives us a platform to do that, which I'm so thankful for, they let us be who we are. They let us shine ourselves and our stories and our personal beliefs uh, to be able to actually connect effectively human to human internally and with our customers. When people meet me, you know, they don't want to meet Microsoft. They want to meet Miri from Microsoft. And they're so, so, so thankful that I am myself, right? And I can share my values. And anybody, you know, the person down the hall is doing the same thing. They have their own values and they're they're not only shared, they're celebrated uh, because they're theirs. And so we're all connected somehow in our stories. You know, when you think about the, everybody's stories, we all have those moments and they all they all have, serve the same way. We are able to change ourselves and grow ourselves uh, and really have a great um, outcome in life because we can connect better through the through the, those transformational moments. Mm-hmm. So how do you use story then to humanize a big, gigantic, ubiquitous brand like Microsoft? Do you have an example of a story that you have seen work that like, wow, that just was really powerful, that again, humanized, demonstrated the, the human impact Microsoft has on people's lives? I do. We have many stories. In fact, um, you know, we actually call people that we use their stories, we call them people of action. I've talked a little bit about that in the past, and we have many of them. You can just look it up and find that we we actually find people's people that have been doing things with our with our technologies and it's their story they've done something and they've been empowered and felt empowered by our technology somehow so we pick up those stories and we tell them um, there's one particular particular of Ariella's sister um, I know her personally I met her in Morocco and she is just as genuine as she can be and what you see of her is exactly who she is in person and she's doing great things with our technologies she actually has um, a shop in El Salvador where she hires um, ex-convicts and ex-gang members or even current gang members from MS-13 and she actually um, gives them a job so they don't end up in jail or even killed. And she uses our, our Surface and our Skype technology to be able to train them remotely because they can't come to her shop because her shop is in a rival um, territory for, for a gang so they'll get killed. So she's using remote technology to be able to train them. Uh, like her there's many many other stories that we use in People of Action. That's on the marketing branding side on the IT side, we have stories of people. Uh, Sarmila is one of our, and you'll see her in IT Showcase. Sarmila is one of our IT executives here. And she has an incredible story of her coming to India. Her dream was to uh, be a physician and, you know, she ended up in IT. So how, how did IT help her even today to fulfill her dream? Because she's using technologies today to help in the medical field. So it kind of came around to her that she ended up in the field anyway because of technology. So we talk about these engineers that have their own personal dreams. We talk about those dreams and we share those dreams and and think about how technology really helps them achieve them in, in some way. You know, something just occurred to me, Miri. What if we play Ariella's story here? We'll just hear the audio because I've seen the video and the video is really incredible. Um, What I'm going to do is have our editor drop it in right here. We're going to let our listeners listen to it because it is really a a fabulous example of storytelling. And then right after we listen to it, let's come back and let's talk about the structure of that story. Does that work for you? That's perfect. Absolutely. All right. Here we go. 
Growing up in El Salvador, I grew up during the Civil War. I moved to New York to go to college, but I knew that if I wanted to go back to El Salvador to actually do something that mattered, I needed to prepare myself. In 2011, I created Sequence, my company of handcrafted jewelry and accessories, with the mission to disrupt the sequence of events that limit at-risk youth in El Salvador. Right now, the biggest problem is gangs. The people that are being targeted is young people. None of them are trained artisans, so we really teach them all the techniques to create our product. Running a business when I'm half the time in New York and half the time in El Salvador was really challenging. While I'm in New York, we'll be on Skype almost once a day. Hola! One of the cool things about the surface is one drive and one note lend themselves to really collaborate with your team, even if you're thousands of miles away. When I'm in New York, I get a lot of inspiration from the Garment District. They're coming up with designs that really come from Latin culture. One of the features that has been super cool to use has been the surface pen. It used to take me days to create designs, then I would have to physically be there. And now they can send the designs and we can change the colors just with the touch of the pen. This technology has really changed everything for us. When you set out to do something that has a purpose and has meaning, when things get really hard, you always go back to that. Some of the young men have been threatened, and to know that they're risking their lives every day to come to work, that's really been life-changing for me to see. I will do anything to continue to affect our lives in a positive way. Dios, lo quiero mucho. You know, we just started, so possibilities are limitless. So, Miri, that was an incredible story. First off, how did you how did you find that story? Well, I didn't personally find that story. We have a team that goes out there and actually uh, looks for these stories out there of people, what we call, again, people of action. Um, I met her in Morocco, and she had already been picked up by Microsoft uh, from the branding side. Steve Clayton is our chief storyteller, and they have an incredible uh, structure and model where they go out and they look for stories. Uh, they, they look for people who are doing things with our own technologies, and we don't embellish the stories. We don't, you know, we just basically give them a mic and we say, tell your story. And that's what they do. We try to keep it as raw and as natural as it can be. So it's not staged and it doesn't feel staged either. So um, she she was picked up along with other uh, people of action. I actually have a book that I can share with you um, about that, about people of action. Um, but we are basically giving a platform to customers to talk about the technologies and how they use them. And then we pick up their stories. We basically are opening up ourselves and listening to the customer through different medium, right? So different channels in social media, in Instagram, uh, different channels in, uh, in YouTube as well. And if people come back and talk to us and we, we pick up their stories, we, we, want, we, we are listening intently for the stories. And, and I think that's the most important part is that we're not letting that feedback uh, pass by. We are looking at everyone who's saying, hey, I love your products. Look at what I'm doing with your products. And that becomes a story. Yeah. So you are really looking for those moments and the human impact that your products are having. Mm -hmm. And then these your customers that are using them become the vehicle to tell that story. And you place them at the center of the story. Mm -hmm. And and Microsoft is not the hero in this journey at all in any way, shape, or form. It's more of the guide or the mentor just to help empower the people that you capture in these stories. Is That's that right? correct. I mean, uh, you know, we are very, very, very much thinking about our mission and how that translates into every story. And our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So whatever that is, whether it's an enterprise, whether it's a single person who is doing something. And, and you know, when we talk about the results of that, the achievement side of that, it's also not up to us to decide what that achievement looks like. You know, it is subjective. And if they think it's something amazing, it, it is amazing. And it's not and it's not a threshold standard of what amazing looks like, of what that achievement is. Um, it's whatever they, they have been able to do and however they've been made, made better by our technologies and services. And do you have, I think I saw somewhere like four categories to these achievements that you kind of look at movement, heroic, betterment, and destination. Do I That's have that That's it. Right? You got them all. You're so good. <laughs> yeah, <that's exactly laughs> Can you tell, can you explain each one of those, what you yeah, mean by so that? Yeah, so we, we, you know, when we 
when we talk and we pick up the stories, we basically categorize them by these four achievement buckets. Uh, and so movement, uh, you know, could be something that they're continuously doing that we empower them to do that didn't exist before. Um, you know, and, and if, if they, if they feel that this is something that they, it's continuous for them, that's where that achievement goes. It's something that has, it's not one, a one time thing of, you know, I want a medal and that's it. Uh, it's continuous. It's like a continuous marathon that they continue to achieve and get a medal at. So in Ariella's case, her sequence, collection.com, her whole thing is a movement about getting these gangbangers and giving them opportunities. Absolutely. It continues. It never stops. Uh, it's she, and it's getting bigger and better for her every time. In fact, the fact that we amplified and you know told her story and we amplified it for her, uh, even give her a bigger platform now. And, and I think it's just wonderful that we've been able to help her even more by, by making the story, bringing the story alive for her and for her, for her family and for, you know, for her team. Um, it just gets better. We continue to use her story and amplify a story. She continues to come and visit and talk more about how it it's, it's been growing her business and what she's been able to do more and more. So absolutely. Yeah. So what about the next one, heroic? What do you mean by that? Yeah. So heroic is anything from, you know, it, it's the hero journey where somebody has a personal story uh, that they have come to that one transformational moment in their lives. They've been able to really bring themselves out of a shell, uh, shell and, and, and really transform themselves to a point where they are now giving something back to the community, to their family, to themselves. Uh, it's, it's really turned them around and made them a hero in their space, whatever that space is. Uh, so we have stories of, you know, people in, in the race car industry that have achieved that status, you know, through something transformative. We have just different, different things that we've been able to pick up on people that have become heroes in their own spaces because of the technology they've used it. They've, you know, we have someone in India who is using our technologies to, he, he built, uh, it wasn't an orphanage, but it was a, a sort of like a, a school for orphans. Um, and he uses our technology to be able to teach them. Right. And so he, those are the heroes in, in that community that do are doing great things, hero things um, with our technology. And so many of those folks are that my experience is they don't consider themselves heroes at all. So in your case, it's really more about, let me just tell this amazing story or journey, you know, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey that you have been on and what has uh, arised because of it. And then you let your audiences see them for the hero they really are, even though quite often they're that reluctant hero. Exactly. And you find it time and time again, they just, you know, they're, they're just so, uh, they're, they're so uh, happy. They're so overwhelmed by the fact that we are calling them a hero because to them, that's just what they do. But we want to make sure that they get the recognition for the work that they're doing. They're changing lives out there. They're, uh, they're, they're accomplishing so many things and they're inspiring so many people. Um, you know, the one that I told you about in, uh, in India, his name is Franz Gassler. I met him, I met him this year at the storytelling summit. We have a storytelling summit. Um, that gets all of us together once a year here at Microsoft. And, you know, we, they, we brought them in person. And it's just so many wonderful stories of people who don't see themselves as heroes, but they're achieving so much and making the world so much better. Um, it's just wonderful to see. <laughs> That's awesome. A friend of mine just produced and uh, uh, launched a documentary called Mully, M-U-L-L-Y, talking about a hero's journey in Africa. When you get a chance, what I'll do is I'll send you a link and I'll include a link in this show here too. His name is Paul Blavin, the producer, and it is just an extraordinary story of human resilience. Um, it's really fascinating. So number three, you have Betterment. What t- What's the Betterment one? Yeah, so the Betterment one is a transformation as well that you see where people have, uh, you know, have began a journey of self-improvement or improvement of of something that they've impacted somehow due to our technology. So we have, for example, a, a story about um, uh, Miller's, there's two people, Melissa Arnott and Matt, Maddie Miller, uh, where they actually um, achieved the 50 peak challenge where they went to the world record of like actually, you know, achieving the summit every single time. That's better men, right? They just, every time they, achieve, they they get to a summit, they get to the next one, they get to the next one, uh, and it just gets better for them. They, they are a better person. They're a better athlete. They're a better, um, you know, um, just achiever altogether because they've been able to challenge themselves bigger and better every single time. So we tell the stories and it's a continuous story as well. Um, but it really talks about just self-improvement, right? Self-improvement and what is done for them. It's what is done for them. Um, 
in a personal matter, but it has inspired so many people. It has touched so many lives and it really inspires everyone to do better themselves. If they can do it, I can do it. If they're a person, a regular person who, you know, climbed Mount, climbed Mount Everest and now they went somewhere else, I can probably do the same. It doesn't seem as far-fetched because they've done it. Sure. And if there's, I don't think there's any better metaphor for storytelling and journeying than the 50 peak challenge. I mean, you're going, climbing a mountain back down again, and every time you learn something about yourself and your compadres in that pursuit. Exactly. Exactly. So it's not a social good thing, but it provides a an inspiration for society the same, right? Yeah. And through storytelling too, is we get to live vicariously through them. So we get to watch them, some of them doing these sorts of things from the safety of my own little chair, my own little home. But as human beings, it's stories are what connect us. So we connect with their ambition and we get to go along for the ride and watch them, what we, you know, what they're doing. And oh, by the way, Microsoft as the brand is there as their Sherpa or guide in the respect of the technology they're using to help help better themselves and achieve something of significance. Exactly. That's, I love that word Sherpa. We are absolutely the Sherpa in these journeys and we love to be the sidekick. We love to be the empowerment behind their force and what they're achieving. And, and, you know, in all of that, you will see very little of our products and services, but you'll see a whole lot of our products and services because at the same time, it speaks to the empowerment that we give. Certainly. It's very, very purpose driven. So your Mm -hmm. last category is destination. What's that about? Yes. So destination is, you know, a purpose that someone has had um, that maybe they weren't able to get to right away, that they were not, you know, for whatever limitations life gives you, uh, they had not been able to achieve or get there specifically. And then they got there. They got there because uh, our technologies or our services somehow helped them get there. They, they're they inspired. Um, they inspire everyone, letting them know once again that they that you can achieve what you set your heart out to. And, and you know, the destination could be real far from your original, from your first step, but you will get there. You will get there. Uh, we have a story about an entrepreneur and in Africa as well. Her name is Michaela Elmer. Uh, and she, uh, she's an entrepreneur who is a B ambassador. She travels around the world, encouraging young people to dream big, to get behind a cause. Uh, and she really is a B advocate, right? She's so, so her destination was that her destination was to, um, to become an ambassador for something that she really believes in. Uh, and she, and we've, we've helped her do that, right? Our, our, our technology has helped her do that. So her story is really inspiring because she's gotten, you know, she's a preteen and a CEO, uh, and she's really just causing a lot of uh, a buzz around around what what we're doing um, at Microsoft to help her, you know, to help her with the technology in her generation, what that means to her and what that means to her story. So uh, she uses Surface, she uses, um, you know, the different things that we can uh, give her uh, for her to really connect with the rest of the world and become that ambassador. Mm, cool. Now, uh, where can people see these stories? Or could I even get the links from you and I can put them right in the show notes? So as you know, you're talking about these after the show, they can go and actually watch these stories as they unfold. Absolutely. So you, I'll send you the link. But also, if you just look at, um, you go to Microsoft.com and go to People Who Inspire, you'll be able to see all of these stories and more uh, of all, all of all of these um, you know, people of action who are doing great things uh, because of Microsoft technologies. Uh, so cool. How long have you all been then in the storytelling business and made this a very pragmatic and intentional part of your communications? You know, I would say that it really became a huge focus uh, in the last in the last three to three to five years. Uh, the last three years, I would say, it's been most of the focus. I, it's come with the internal change, the culture change that Satya, our CEO, has brought to us. It's come with the idea that strategy, uh, that storytelling is not just a story. It's a strategy. It's a business way to communicate internally. It's a business way to communicate externally with our customers. And so we have really placed a big focus. And that's why, you know, these these roles exist today. I never even knew that we had a storytelling role at Microsoft. And we do. Uh, and the reason for that is the focus that we are having into what that means to our business and what that means to our customers and to our potential customers. So it's been a really huge transformation from look at our products and look what, how awesome they are to look at our products and look what they can do for you. Tell us your story. So here's a question for you. It's always the toughest one to answer around story and storytelling is 
how do you at Microsoft measure the ROI of story? Because I hear this so often, especially when you go in and they're the skeptics and they're the high brows are saying story is just a gimmick. It doesn't really work. Again, it's a soft skill. What is the business case or the ROI that can prove to me that story actually works? ROI is always engagement for us in the feedback that we're getting from our customers and the way that people are responding to the Microsoft brand. I think it is apparent very much that today Microsoft, you know, has been recognized by Forbes, by Huffington Post. I mean, so many organizations as a, one of the top brands to work for employees, even millennials want to work for Microsoft. And it, that that is the huge, the biggest ROI is when a brand positions itself through story in a way, in an environment where there's so much noise out there and we can, we're all trying to compete for, you know, the, the customer space and the market. Uh, but if we have solidified ourselves as a brand that is effectively empowering other people that has meant that our stories have been effective that have resonated with people that have been recognized by people and potential customers and that is the biggest ri you will ever get when you hear those testimonials when you hear people responding when you get the likes all of that is nice and those are metrics that everybody kind of gets but the true engagement when people are coming to you uh, i can't tell you how many linkedin people I get uh, connecting and saying, I want to work for Microsoft. And that has been a huge turnaround uh, for us at Microsoft. People just know that the brand is powerful, it's inspiring, and it's doing what it's set out to do, especially for the millennial generation that they want to do something bigger and better beyond themselves. And I see that time and time again, you know, we've actually changed our our, um, our hashtag to Microsoft Life uh, because it's just become really a, a life. It's, it's a force on its own that we're living here at Microsoft and it's been transformational for our culture. Well, and being a person that actually grew up around Microsoft, because I, as I mentioned, grew up on the east side. And I remember when Microsoft was just one office um, on the 520s, you're heading over the bridge. And I was <laughs> in high school, I think at the time, and I didn't know what Microsoft was. Software, you know, computing was just coming around. We're talking, this is the late 70s, early 80s. I went to school over at WSU across the mountains from you there, came back. And every time I would come back to visit my mom, there was a whole nother office and then another Microsoft mm -hmm. office. And then, of course, built the big campus just down the road from where I grew up in Redmond. And to be honest with you, you know, Microsoft wasn't always that brand that you're talking about right now. You know, right. it took it on the chops like all big brands do. You know, it, there's, there's no brand that hasn't when it's grown to a global nature that Microsoft has. But you feel like just within the last three years of really embracing story within the Microsoft walls that it's had that big of impact on the folks that want to come and work for you and those that want to buy your products or services? I do. And internally, you know, we have people from all over the world internally asking, how can I be a better storyteller? And that is incredible. That that tells us that we're doing the right thing. And, and I do, like I said at the beginning, I do believe that everyone is a storyteller. We all tell stories. Uh, we just need to be guided, you know, on, onto the basic of a story, the structure of a story and how to impact people with the story. Uh, but we all have it in us. And, and I think, you know, it's a great thing when we're seeing this this shift in general of communication as we look at the next generation of social media and of communication models when our ro robots are going to kind of step in and chatbots are you know coming in and AI mm -hmm. and all of that that's great and all and they'll they'll let us be a little bit more um, more st uh, strategic because they'll they'll take over the more I guess tedious work but one thing that they can't do is they can't tell a story right we are the humans we are the souls and we are the ones that can tell a really good story they'll be able to put it together and maybe launch it but we are the ones behind that that story that makes it great do you think AI has a role in brand and business storytelling? Oh, 100%. It, it'll be completely immersed in the experience for customers. AI is going to help us uh, really determine the best way to deliver that story, the best space to deliver the story. It'll help us, uh, you know, really personalize the story as well as we get data that is continuously building algorithms to tell us, you know, who's doing what and why and where they are. And, and you know, really the personalization, I think is going to be a big deal especially with um, you know your personal assistant that's coming around that's I think that's the best the, the next thing that's uh, going to be trending uh, with that 
the the people, the humans behind that, as I said, the soul behind that, it, I, we'll be able to just put it together. So they'll 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 be able to give us the data and and tell and, and give us information on where we should go. But we're the ones who are going to be the brain behind it and saying this is why we should do it this way. It's going to touch a, a person this way. So AI might be almost like the EKG of storytelling, the emotional EKG that's going to deliver the big data to give us the ideas of what kind of stories to tell and to whom to connect on their terms. Is that kind of... I love that. Episode. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a great allegory. Uh, yes, they, they'll, they'll give, be giving us the spikes of where we need to go in and what's the best opportunity to come in and talk to a customer, uh, that it doesn't feel salesy, that it doesn't feel pushy, that it feels that it is a genuine um, experience for them because we understand where they are and what, what um, aspect and what point of the customer journey they are and, and how do we can connect with them with a good story that ultimately leads to the final story to the main story, which is our mission. Gotcha. Now, do you at Microsoft and under your tutelage and others have um, internal storytelling workshops and programs building a storytelling culture? Or how do you tease those stories out of your folks, those 4,000 people around the world and get them to actually embrace it and share true stories well told? Great question. We are still working on that. We have some um, already some internal trainings. Yes, we do. They're digital trainings. It's called uh, Story for Storytelling for Impact. And so anyone right now who wants to internally learn more about storytelling, we do give a, a whole course on you know what what that looks like and the, the basic of storytelling, and, and also includes a stagecraft and stage presence because sometimes we have to take that personally and take it onto a stage and talk to customers. So all of that is included. We are continuously working on. A, you know, a um, a training, not only a course, but I would say almost like a school where the different disciplines can definitely, um, you know, learn from and take that back specific to their own spaces in different languages. Uh, you know, if it's sales, it's a, different, it's, 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 a, it's a different aspect of storytelling, if it's operations, if it's customer service. So we're going to definitely grow that uh, in the future. We, we hope to do that because we know that it's definitely something that uh, our teams can focus on and can definitely leverage and, and take advantage of of and benefit from. So we are working on that and we want to continue working on that. We also have lynda.com. Um, we use that internally as one of the benefits that we get as a Microsoft Tees. And we there's a lot of storytelling uh, courses there that people can take from different, uh, different people in the industry that have been really good. So they have that as well available to them. We also have a, a storytelling summit, as I mentioned before. We get together once a year. We bring people of action to tell their stories and where they how they're doing. We bring other storytellers from from outside the industry. We learn from them. We have these uh, workshops that we break down. We bring people that are neuroscientists and they talk about the power of story, what it does to the brain. So very, very cool stuff that we're doing for our storytellers here. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Do you find that that online training is as impactful as being in person when you're trying to deliver storytelling because it is such a human element? It's such a human thing? You know, I think not. I think that I hope HoloLens uh, takes off quickly so that we can transport ourselves personally <laughs> part of the world instantaneously. Uh, you know, it is costly to travel everywhere, and it, it is, it, it's definitely more powerful when it's in person. So like I said, maybe teleportation in the HoloLens will get there quickly quickly enough that we can uh, hone that in and be able to tell stories in person and bring ourselves to everywhere, every parts of the world. Because it is the most powerful thing is that energy you feel as you tell the story. That's where our sense, our ancestors, you know, they, that's how they did it, right? They sat around the fire and they told the stories and the inflections at the, as they told the stories. Uh, you can't, you can't uh, take away that human element. That is what makes it that much powerful. Yeah. So, Mary, uh, one of my final questions here is for our listeners out there. They are any, anyone, everyone from an entrepreneur to a solopreneur. Uh, they may have a, a business of five to 10 to 50 to 100 employees in it. Quite often, it's a mom and pop organization that has really a terrific business model and a product offering. And they are, are starting to grow. They're scaling quite quickly. They're adding new people, um, but they're finding more, um, more competition coming into their industry because they're seeing their success. Or they will go in and their banker, they're looking for some additional funding for growth or investors. And they will often say, 
I just don't have a story. So Mm -hmm. a brand story. So what do you recommend? How could people start if they don't feel like they have a very clear brand story right now? What would you recommend that they do? Yeah. So ask, ask yourself out there, mompreneur, entrepreneur, a person that's just starting your business, ask yourself, why do you exist? Why did you decide to open up that business? What is what is that brand, product, or service that is bringing something new, different, innovative to the market? Why do you exist? That is your story. That is the mission of your brand. You exist to provide something you've created, hopefully a mission statement, and that is your ultimate story. And so when you can personalize that and bring that to a customer and remind them every time that's why you exist. And, you know, in, in essence, you exist to make something better, to give something to someone that makes them better. Um, and they can tell you that back. They can say, you know, when I discovered your product, now I can do this faster or better or, or cuter, whatever the, the aspect of the, of the service service is and what it does to the customer is the story. So you are able to not only hone in to the mission, but also give the platform to your customers to tell that story, which is what we're doing at Microsoft, right? We're doing exactly that. So um, talk to your customers, ask them how they feel about your brand, ask them how, how they feel about your product. It takes a lot of authenticity and it takes a lot of being very vulnerable, uh, but you have to be because the vulnerability is what makes us human. And that's ultimately the one aspect of story is that it's human. So make yourself vulnerable, um, ask the questions, ask the right questions and your customers will talk to you. If, if they're your customers, they'll talk to you. And don't take it personally. No, no, and, and it, isn't really, it never is. It's actually, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing that they're, I always say, if a customer's talking about you or they're talking to you, they're your customer. And, and that's a beautiful thing. They're taking the time. They're being emotionally impacted enough to be able to talk back to you. So that's a good thing. That's never a bad thing. And they want to help, don't they? Because if they believe in your brand and you have actually <laughs> been there to power, power them up and you come to them with honesty and say, hey, I need some help. What do you think of this? They're going to be honest with you. They are. They are. And because they care, right? If they didn't, they wouldn't even respond. If anyone takes the time to to respond in this busy, busy world, it's because they care enough about your brand. They want to see it succeed just like you. And if you turn them into the hero of the customers of the story, then now they're really caring. They're really immersed into the story because they want to succeed and you want to see them succeed. So put it from that position, position the story, letting them know that they're the ones, they're the main characters the story. And can brands look, if, even to simplify it a little bit more, like you have done with the category, category, <laughs> categorization of your storytelling from movement, heroic, betterment, and destination, can they use those same kind of categories in their own brand development? Absolutely. Steal away, please. Take it all from these big, big brands that are doing things when they have big, big budgets and you don't. Uh, this is what you should be doing. Learn from the brands that are doing things that have proven successful and, and you know, steal away, use the same models and structure and see what works for you. Again, it may not work for everyone, especially if it's a different industry, a different sector, if it's a government side, uh, if it's, you know, in another language. Uh, you just have to keep trying to see what works, uh, but do do see what other brands are doing and, 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 and take those uh, learnings from them. This is why we're sharing this, right? This is why the podcast exists. Take what are learning, take what has been working for us and see if it works for you. Absolutely. Well, and the fact of the matter is people can say, well, that's Microsoft and they got billions that they can advertise with. The thing about story is it's a, a, a playing field leveler. You don't have to have any money to go out and find your stories and to tell your stories. Put them yep. up on your website, tell them in person, tell them in training sessions, put them in your manuals, put them everywhere. You don't have to have budgets like, you know, Microsoft has for advertising to tell these stories. That's the beautiful thing about it. And if you get 50 people to tell their stories and they themselves, of course, they're going to promote their own stories, then you have 50 more people online helping your SEO because they're talking about their own stories, right? They, they wrote a blog or you amplified it. Uh, and so they, they love to amplify their own content. And now their content is about you. So now they're mentioning your brand. And so you get free mentions uh, that, you know, get that get on placed on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram. And you can just go ahead and retweet that and repost that so, and curate that content as well. So um, so many ways to repurpose that content uh, from stories from customers. Miri, do you have um, a story from 2017 that you witnessed, that you experienced, that you that just really moved you? It's like, wow, that's what I'm talking about right there. At Microsoft or in general? Both. Yeah, I guess Microsoft in general, something that you saw that could be an example to our listeners of saying this was a really powerful story. 
You know, I've seen a lot of powerful stories uh, this year. Being here when I moved to Redmond, I actually just moved in July. So I'm at the headquarters, right? I'm, I'm here and I'm seeing that the energy is so much different when you're walking around the hallways and everything is happening. I, I have to tell you the the biggest story that I've seen uh, in 2017 was Satya Nadella's book uh, that just came out. Um, I have never met my CEO in such a beautiful place as I did through his story, through his personal story. It changed my perspective on him. I learned things about him that I had no idea, uh, you know, that he was, he had gone through and he's, con- he continues to go through. He himself is a, you know, is a hero and it's a people of action. I, I love his story and it's so humbling to listen and to learn from him personally on what he's been through. And I, his story has really captivated me this year. It has really shifted my perspective on many things on how we're doing business and why here at Microsoft. Sometimes we don't understand leadership and you know at that level, and we, we don't understand why they're doing the things that they're, do, they're doing. When Satya has poured his heart out the way he did, um, and it's available to everyone. So please get yourself a book if you want, if you can. I highly recommend it. It really you know, moves me in a way that not, I've always believed in Microsoft. Now I believe in it even more. I'm such a fan of our brand because I know that our top leader is someone who is just at the very genuine level, a, a wonderful human being, want, doing wonderful hu- things for our humans, uh, for, you know, for our humanity. Uh, and it's at the core of what we do today. So uh, it's just ch- changed everything for me. Oh, that's cool. What's the name of the book? Uh, it's Hit Refresh. Oh, hit refresh. Gotcha. Now I've got something that uh, I can kick off my new year reading. I read, you know, uh, Phil Knight's book, very similar from Nike, and he tells a great story. And it gave me a complete new appreciation for Nike. So Mm -hmm. I will definitely hit refresh um, for 2018. Well, Mary, thank you for being here. And I'm really excited to be on a panel discussion with you at Social Media Marketing World February 28th through March 2nd. I'm not exactly sure when and there our panel is, but um, Phil Mershon and the, and the gang over there at, social, at uh, social Media Examiner invited us to get together, and I can't wait to meet you in person. I know. So they brought us together, and I'm so thankful that they did because I'm so excited. I love the work that you're doing. I checked out your website, and it's just so cool what you do uh, in helping others to tell their story and how they can do that. So I'm excited to meet you in person and and you know talk stories. <laughs> Oh, good. And you'll meet Cassie Roma, too. Cassie Roma, who was on our show a couple weeks ago. And like you, just a tremendous spirit, great communicator, marketer coming to us from New Zealand. So, um, folks, if you're going to be at Social Media Marketing World, come and see our panel because we're going to be talking all about brand and business storytelling with two of the most brilliant minds in business around this. That's Miri and and Cassie. So I hope you're all there. And thank you so much for uh, joining us. The next time up in Seattle, uh, visiting my folks, maybe you're around, I'll come and knock on your door. I would love to. Please come um, knock on my door and I'll be happy to take you around and show you around Microsoft Campus, the one that you kind of pass by every day on your way to school. Now you can see it all (laughs) in person. (laughs) That would be awesome. Mary, thank you so much. And thank you all for listening to this edition of Business of Story. If I can help you clarify your story to amplify your impact and maybe even better, simplify your life, visit me over at businessofstory.com and download your DIY brand story strategy workbook. You can work this yourself. It's only 45 bucks and literally it can lead to millions of dollars in revenue. But more importantly, it can lead to a better company with a better story that your people can live into and prosper from. So join me over there at businessofstory.com and join me next Sunday when we will have another brand storyteller from around the world, like Mary, that will help you clarify your story too. So thank you for listening. And remember, the most potent story you ever tell is the story you tell yourself. So make it a great one. Thanks for listening.